Welcome back for another episode of the Ross Bolin Podcast. I am your host, Ross Bolin, here with the man they call J-Bone, Jared Borislow. And Jared, I am extremely proud that our company has a 0.0% AI selfie art posting rate currently pretty not good. a single one of us it's pretty good in this day and age i'm kind of shocked not a single one of us posted one of those lame artificial intelligence created paintings of ourselves or whatever the hell those are. you've seen those everywhere yeah, oh, right yeah, yeah yeah look here's the hard truth not a single one of you is as good looking cool or interesting as your ai created photos make you seem which is why everybody's you know putting them up every single person i've seen post them the AI, it's flattering. It's the ultimate filter. Yeah, it's like having 56 different Instagram filters applied to your face, and then if you put up a photo of that, but it just, I just, it just highlights in the end how not good looking you actually are in real life to, to me. Like it's a, it's a, it's a net negative. I think it more so highlights how good looking you could be if maybe you tried a little harder. I don't know if trying has anything to do with it in this case. You just have to live in like an alternate dimension where. Everybody looks like they're a video game character or something. But this is one of my least favorite internet trends in recent memory, which is really saying something because there haven't been a lot that I've loved. I love Wordle. Still doing that. But that's a game. I just don't get this. It's, it's disheartening to see how many people participate in it. I've also seen, speaking of artificial intelligence, so aside from the everyone posting these, these artificially intelligent created images of themselves i've seen a lot of people especially on twitter asking some ai questions and then oh, yeah. posting like the chat, weird answers it's called like chat gpt yeah and you can kind of troll it and it, it'll go back and forth with you and have like a weird conversation about things and and also people telling ai to write them a story yeah and then giving it parameters or asking for a story about like a news like write me an, a news article about this thing people have been doing this and faking this for like 20 years you know those things it's like oh i made it watch 2000 hours of seinfeld and made it write a seinfeld script yeah that was the original version of yeah. this but like i think this is actually regular ass people going in and and participating in this ai experiment thing but now, at this point, it used to be I was terrified of the Boston Dynamics robots just busting down the door of my home one day and murdering me and my entire family. You, you know, didn't you think one of them was going to like jerk you off while you slept or something? That was Elon Musk. That wasn't robot. a fear. That was a hope. And this, it, now I'm more afraid that artificial intelligence is going to make you and I's jobs obsolete. They're going to take our jobs. You know what I mean? The AI is going to Turk or gerb. Well, they can just make content. Like in 10 seconds, it can write an article that would take you 30 minutes. Like that's not good. Yeah. You know? It's not that great for content for sure. Like if you're a factory worker, I get why you're afraid of the robots. Because they're coming for your gerb. Yeah. But in this case, now I'm scared because it's like. I mean, the robots are coming for ev every gerb. The only. I, what's a single gerb that a rrr curtain turk? I can't name one. I mean, you just named probably the hardest I mean, job jerking me off uh, in my sleep. I've already seen like restaurants where the entire thing is AI automated, where it like it like drops like peppers and onions down a chute into a frying pan and like a robot moves the frying pan back and forth. Yeah, it's like how that guy had in Back to the Future, the scientist had his, his like that room set up to make breakfast for him or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I think that was Back to the Future. It may have been Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Where's that technology at? I mean, let's be honest. Breakfast is the easiest thing to make. You literally put something in a pan, flip it once. You can do that for everything. You can make it compli complicated, though, if you want to. Yeah, you can, but like... You don't have to. Though. No. Yeah, it's a choice. Yeah, make the AI poach eggs. Uh, that's, that's what like the diner cooks are going to like hold on to. It's like, well, the AI can't poach the egg. It can only fry it. This is stupid, though. I don't... I don't know, like, I've questioned this with the robot stuff before in Boston Dynamics. Like, who's in charge of that program that they just keep pushing it forward, and now the robot can, like, jump rope and do a backflip and, like, rip your nuts off and How sprint you... at 30 miles an hour? Like, why do they keep adding more things? And now we're on the AI side, I'm like, hey, could you stop? How do we not know who the CEO of that is? What if it's, like, some evil guy? If it was you, would you want people to know who you are? No. No, no you're fuck right. no. Yeah, Everybody you, would come yeah. for that ass. Yeah. But the, and the, now I'm like, I'm just, this just the first time, because I'm very confident. Did you see the Morgan Freeman thing yes. that went viral, yes. like, in the last few days? 
where it's not Morgan Freeman at all. But it looks and sounds like him. It looks and sounds exactly like him, which obviously presents issues for, you know, news distribution on social media. People can make anyone say anything, and you don't know what's real versus what's fake. Um, you and I were just talking before the show about Trump has released those new trading cards and how we're suspicious that perhaps the Trump in the video advertising them is in fact a deep fake because it's so absurd, <laughs> the things he says. But uh, that's also just the way he rolls, I guess. Um, but it, I'm, I'm confident that we are not far off from somebody being able to tell an artificially intelligent pro computer program, make me an episode of the Ross Boland podcast, and it will sound exactly like you and me, because how hard could it be? Just talk about fast food no. for 20 minutes, talk about buttholes for 20 minutes, make some jokes about getting jerked off in your sleep. Next thing you know, you've got an episode of RBP, which again, feels like a threat to me, but also maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. Like that would be freeing if I didn't have to do my job, but my job would get done. Right? Well, I mean, How do I know you're real is my question at the end of the segment. You don't. You know? Because I don't spend that much time in this room. You could have set up some kind of hologram, holographic projection, Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Princess Leia type shit where it's just like beaming you into that chair. I mean, think about it this way. Like, usually I leave the studio after you. When's the last time you, you I left the studio before you? And every episode, before the episode begins, you do go lock yourself in the bathroom for a few minutes. And for all I know, the real Jared never comes back out. You could be in the other room right now doing God knows what jerking off stale fish, and then there's just some robot sitting in here with me. And the only way to find out is to cut you open. That's the fucked up part. In every robot movie, someone ends up like cut, like in Westworld, you, you, they end up cutting themselves open to see if they're still human or if there's robot stuff in their, in their arm or whatever. Are you going to cut? I'm going to cut you. Like lengthwise or, or widthwise? Like horizontally or vertically? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, are you going to cut me like, what is that, the Kingsman? The one that Just doesn't right make you middle? bleed out. Like, the one that doesn't... If you, cut, if you cut me, if you cross-sect me, I'm going to bleed out. Yeah, but you know how, you know, there's, you know, one is more damaging than the other or something. I, I mean, yeah, the one that cuts your brain in half is definitely more damaging than the one that cuts your stomach I wasn't going to go for your head. I'd probably do a foot. I think that's the, le like, you know. Why don't you, know, why don't you, why don't you open me up? But like, like yeah, you're, you'd like, like that, you're, wouldn't you? <laughs> Open me up, Daddy. Why don't you split me? <laughs> yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Why, no way to say this. Why don't you split me in two? And <laughs> no, if you just like open up my chest and like you know perform a surgery, <laughs> or why don't you open up my head and perform a, a, a brain surgery? It can't be that hard. Yeah, we talked about that on Patreon yesterday. Yeah, go check out that conversation. patreoncom slash podcast. And then after you're done doing that, remind yourself not to put up AI generated artwork of you yeah. with a fucking space helmet on. Why do so many of them get people put? They're getting a helmet well, put on. Clearly, some it's kind like, of weird, futuristic shit. Just so you know, people are paying for these. What? Yeah, like ninety nine cents or something. No, it's like twelve dollars for a hundred pictures. There's, there's like a you go and like put pay, put your money in, and they give you like a hundred pictures for twelve dollars or whatever. People are paying like decent money for this. Like, and then deal. what? And then what? And you you get you get the pictures. But like, what do they do with the? Other than put them up on Instagram, what what are they doing with the photo? Like framing these? I was wondering that actually, if people are framing, you know they are. I hope not. Yeah, people frame really dumb shit. Why'd you frame a fake picture? Of like sixty eight percent of the American population has a Hobby Lobby live laugh love What's, up in their what, fucking house. What, okay, somewhere. you walk into somebody's house, you see live laugh love, or you see a framed AI picture of them. Which one do you hate more? Live laugh love. Okay. It's less current. Even. Who at came least, up at with least you get saying. credit for being on top of the latest trend if you've got yeah. the fucking AI artwork hanging in your living room. Who came up with that? Live, laugh, love. Joan of Arc. Is that what got her sainted? She used to yell it when she ran into battle. Hmm. Live, laugh, love! And she'd just, you know, like that. Yeah. What would be your battle cry, Jared? Uh, Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey, Baba Booey, yeah. Howard Stern's penis? Yes. Yeah. That's good. I probably yell, J Bob. Yeah, that's obvious. That's that, got to be it. That's got to strike fear into people. What the hell would I yell? Maybe mine is live, laugh, love. No, you are alone. 
that wouldn't be very motivating to the army behind me. Well, no, you say you're not alone to them, and then you, your enemy is alone. I turn back to my army, you are not alone! And then I turn to the, the enemy army as I'm sprinting forward and tell them they are alone? Yeah. Eh, that could work. Today's episode is brought to you by Indochino. When it comes to style, there's no one right answer for everyone. It isn't math. But we each have our own tastes and needs we want fulfilled when it comes to our fits, which makes finding the perfect suit impossible if you're shopping off the rack. But finding a suit that's perfect for you is simple. Thanks to Indochino, choose your favorite fabric and customize every detail to find the look that's perfect for you. Submit your measurements online or get measured in store for a custom made for you fit at an incredible price. And with their fall collection featuring new colors, premium fabrics... You'll be in style all season long. I can tell you personally, the Indochino experience is incredible. Whether you go to one of their showrooms and get measured up or do it from home, I have done both now. Been to the Indochino in Austin here. That's where I went the first time I got an Indochino suit. Uh, but for my most recent order, where I got the, the green suit that so many of you know and love that I posted on social media and got so much feedback from, um, that was all done online. I measured myself at home. Well, not my, my wife helped me, but uh, measured up at home. Submitted all my stuff online, and uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. That one was completely ordered offline. Did not go into the store. Get a premium personalized wardrobe without spending a fortune. You can shop custom fitted shirts as well. It's not just suits, Jared. It's not. I got everything you need to look your best. Custom fitted shirts, casual wear, outerwear, and more. They are always adding new designs and fabric options. So if you're ready to elevate your look even further. They also let you make any suit that they have into a tux, by the way. If you've got a wedding coming up, some kind of black tie affair, New Year's Eve. Everybody wants to look their best on New Year's Eve, Jared. Mm -hmm. Even when I used to stay home on New Year's Eve, I would wear a tuxedo. It's the move, and you can make any of the suits on Indochino into a tuxedo. So, design your perfect suit with Indochino today. Get 10% off any purchase of $3.99 or more. That's 10% off when you use code RBP. At Indochino.com. That's I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O. Indochino.com. Promo code RBP. I have some insane headlines of the day for you. Mm -hmm. The first one is something that I hope we achieve in the United States at some point. We've touched on it many times here on this show. New Zealand bans cigarette sales to everyone born after 2008. So I guess they were like, we can't save them all. But we can save everyone born after 2008. But here's the story from a, a combination of the New York Times and Axios. Is that how it's pronounced? Axios? Yeah, I think so. Axios. By 2050, 40-year-olds in New Zealand will be too young to buy cigarettes. That's due to legislation passed in the country on Tuesday, which means anyone born after 2008 will never be able to buy cigarettes or tobacco-based products. It will mean the number of people able to buy tobacco products will shrink each year, with a generation of people banned in New England or New Zealand by 2050, not New England. Under the new laws, which take effect in 2023, the country's smoking age of 18 would be raised year by year until it applies to the whole population. Beginning in 2023, those under 15 would be barred from buying cigarettes for the rest of their lives. The legislation is the result of more than a decade of public health campaigns in 2011. New Zealand first announced its plans to reduce smoking levels to below 5% of the population by 2025, a target extending across all ethnic groups, including indigenous Maori and Pacific Island citizens, which I'm not sure why that information is pertinent. But over the years, the price of cigarettes has been hiked to among the highest in the world. Jared, guess how much a pack of cigarettes in New Zealand costs. Can you tell me how much a pack of cigarettes costs in America first? I, I think it's like... I want to say eight, like, okay, so down, it's, it's different in every area, right? I'm, I'm going to guess like 11, tw $12 in New York. For how many cigarettes? For a full pack of cigarettes. How many? Uh, eight, 16? I think there's 20, okay. 30 cigarettes in there. So I'm, that's definitely not 30. I've seen a pack of cigs. Isn't it like two rows or is it three? I don't know. I think it's three rows. Oh. I smoked a lot of heaters back in the day. There's 20. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to say in, if in America you think it's like 12 bucks for 20, I'm going to say New Zealand it's like 30? 20. 20 bucks. A buck a cig? Yeah. One dollar per cigarette. Um, I, I, I want to say in Texas, it's still like eight fifty or $9. Do you know what's crazy about that? Like, you know, you ever go to a sushi place and you're like, damn, this sushi is like... $10 for one roll, yeah, one little bite. It, yeah, and it's like, it's a dollar a bite. Like, you, what would you rather have? A bite of sushi or a cigarette? I'd rather have a bite of sushi. Dude, the sushi that blows my mind is when it's like, that we have uh, Uchi here in Austin. It's one of my favorites. And they have this piece of... Uh, 
beef. I can't remember. The Gutoro. Yeah. Gutoro. Oh, my God. And it's, it is $10 for the one oh, bite. It was 16 when I went. Yeah. Oh, maybe they've may raised the prices due to inflation. I had to stop going because inflation's gotten so bad. But uh, it, it's also completely worth it. It's the best bite of meat. I eat a lot of meat, a lot of red meat. It is the best bite of meat I have ever had. It's the closest thing to like, you know how people would be like to eat food and be like, that was better than sex. This is the, the only food I think that I've ever put in my mouth yeah. where I was like, legitimately, if someone gave me the choice, like sex or this. It's like a dry aged Wagyu short rib bite and it's like a nigiri on top of a piece of rice and it is it I don't know what they marinate that in or it's what orgasmic. They, it's it is salty it is sweet it oh, is yeah. truly incredible and by the way Uchiko get their uh soft shell crab roll best sushi roll I've ever had does that also exist at Uchi or just know. Uchiko I don't know it's mo- like mostly the same stuff at the two different restaurants. Uchiko is just like a, a slightly more affordable price point most I like of the Uchiko time. better for sure like not even close it's really based on like, how been, close you are to which one. I've been to each one once, and I would drive further to go to Uchiko. Yeah. Than go to Uchiko. That's the one on North Lamar, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of a trek if you're in South Austin. But yeah, so it says uh, today, first of all, 20 bucks, like I said. But it says, with these measures, smoking has declined overall. Yeah, I would assume. Uh, the national smoking rate for adults has halved in the past decade, so gone down 50%. Only 8% of New Zealand's adult population smoked every day in 2022, according to government statistics, which still feels high. 8% smoked every day? But six smokers, y'all are on another level. Y'all are fucking crazy. Like I've said, that shit, it like, even just having not switched to the vape version, not saying it's better for you, I really don't know. I have no data to back up any of this. There is data. But like the... Yeah, it probably isn't yet. That's a good point. But the the fact that you didn't even make the effort to have it look better in the eyes of the non-smoking citizens of the world really says something. It's crazy to me. It's nuts. And I shame you often for that reason. But New Zealanders, man, on top of this shit. That's just why it's crazy to think about that we're not far off from a world where I've talked about it before. Like, why is it legal for us to be able to buy this product, products, tobacco products? based products that are like just hor- it's not just the cancer thing that's that's what gets lost in the shuffle a lot, of, a lot of the time when people are arguing about cigarettes and dip and tobacco based products it's not just the threat of cancer it's all of the other horrible shit that it does to your body like with dip for example the reason I ended up quitting was because it was eroding my gum line to the point that I was going to have to get a fucking skin graft to fix my gums which I know people who have had to do that I'm not trying to do that they take skin off of your ass Jared, and they put it in oh, your mouth. I've got enough of that. Yes, exactly. You and me both. So it's just I, I can't, I can't, I just can't. But it's crazy that there's well, going to be. Here's my question: for a you. generation of New Zealanders soon that will have never had the legal right to buy tobacco-based products. What's your question? Uh, do you think that making cigarettes illegal is just a gateway to keeping marijuana illegal? Is marijuana illegal in New Zealand? I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying in general. Is marijuana illegal? If you say you want this in America, wouldn't making tobacco illegal just be like a reason to keep marijuana illegal? How are those two things related in your mind? mind? Not my mind. In the minds of the the, the dinosaurs and making laws. I don't think they're... Oh, you smoke this. Oh, you smoke that. They both give you a tiny little high. Okay, let's let's keep them both illegal. I don't know about that. I don't know. Could be a slippery slope. Cannabis law in New Zealand is regulated by the Misuse of Drugs Act of 1975, which makes unauthorized possession of any amount of cannabis a crime. Well, what is authorized? Oh, in 2020, they made a referendum. Non-binding, in fact. I'm not reading all this. No. If you want to know about it, go Google New Zealand pot or whatever. But yeah, as far as uh, heaters go, they're on the way out for the Kiwis. That's what they're called, right? Yeah, yeah, they're the Kiwis. It's not, a, it's not a racist. No, they're the Kiwis. Slang, right? I had a cigarette for the first time in a long time, like two weekends ago. Just got blackout drunk. Said, yeah. "Fucking give me one of those." Yeah, it was, I I hate it. I only do it for the visual appeal. It looks cool. I do it. I do it to look cool, and then I like just cough my way through the entire hoot stick. Well, drunk cigs are undeniably amazing. No, like, I, I don't almost even like on, it. I don't oh, even like it. I, th- I think it really? looks cool. I think I, I like how I look. I like how it makes me look. You just don't strike me as the guy who's overly concerned about looking cool. 
which but like they make me look so cool that I like it, right? Like I, I'm not concerned about looking cool, but this is like a cheat code. I don't. It, think... It's like it's like I can do such little effort to look 25 times cooler. I'm gonna do it. I wouldn't sometimes. say they make you look cooler anymore. They make you look like more of a bad boy. They give you edge because you see somebody ripping a heater and you're like, that person doesn't give a fuck. That's what it does in my mind. It used to like, and you know, like Clint Eastwood ripping a heater in the fucking sixties or whatever. Yeah. That looked cool as shit, but I don't know. I see a lot of, I like when I'm <laughs> here's the area you look least cool smoking a cigarette. If you're doing it while driving your vehicle. I'm always just like, that is the most depressing fucking thing I've ever seen. Ruining the resale value of your car. You ever, you ever driving in like, in a, in a decent rainstorm where you pass some fucking sicko who's got their window rolled down a quarter of an inch and they're in there just, they're smoking a cig, couldn't even wait to get home or wherever the fuck or pull over, get under an awning of some kind. They're smoking a cig with the window barely rolled down, like blowing the fucking smoke I mean, out of that tiny... I think that is more acceptable than in t- stopping your car under an awning to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> That's so they're, much worse. They're equally desperate moves, but the, the <laughs> just like the cigarette, like smoking in your car is so gross. And it that smell, it never goes away. What about vaping in your car? I see a lot of people tossing clouds in Austin out the window. I feel like that's that's a... It doesn't sink in to like the seats and shit the same way that cig smoke does. You can't get that shit off you. It's one of the things about like when I was smoking cigarettes in high school, I don't understand how I wasn't getting caught every time I smoked one. Because I would come home and like throw my laundry in the laundry basket and then the whole house would smell like cigarettes for two weeks. Yeah. Just don't get it. You probably smelled like cigs big time. I definitely did. But uh, the the only area that I understand cigarette smoking is drunk cigarette smoking. Of course, that the problem is that you then get addicted to them, and then you do it when you're not drunk. But uh, as I've argued before, sober cigs in 2022, absolutely psychotic move. I look at you and I think you're fucking one bad thing away from completely derailing. And I don't know what that is, but you're just like you're on edge to go postal. What about sober vaping of nicotine? Yeah. Eh. Because I can't tell what it is. You don't. You don't even know which is worse, though. It could be Nobody caffeine that worse. you got them to buy. It could be pot. Could be PCP. I think you can vape anything now, right? Uh, I'll vape you. Next headline: Man in China fined four hundred and seventy-eight dollars for reclining his train seat. Want to hear the story? Doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you anyway. The ongoing debate about whether it's acceptable to recline your seat while traveling is taking a turn in China's. Hunan province, after a man was fined for leaning back on a train. Court documents released in November saw officials take a dim view of the March 2022 incident in which a university student, identified only by his surname, Wang, had his laptop... not funny. I didn't laugh. Had his laptop damaged while, <laughs> while on a train to the city of Wuhan. Wang had been using his recently purchased computer on a foldable seat back table when the man sitting in front of him, named Lu, L-I-U... Liu, Lou, Lou, Lou Gehrig, Lou Gehrig reclined right into Wang's laptop, breaking the screen. Damn, that's a violent that's recline. A, that's a hard recline. The Jiangyang, close enough, County People's Court in Hunan ruled both parties were partly responsible for what happened with Lou Gehrig, 70% at fault because he reclined his seat in the first place, and Wang, 30% to blame because he should have been more careful. How the fuck is Wang 30%? Let me finish. As a result, Lou Gehrig was ordered to pay $478.15, 70% of the amount Wang sued for. In its decision, the court pointed out that notices were posted on the train reminding people to check with the passenger behind them before reclining their seats. Huh. Why don't you just make them not recline? Because this argument gets people as polarized as American politics. Do you remember that, uh, like, uh, invention that a guy made that prevented the person in front of you from reclining their chair? Yeah, the knee guard or whatever it was called? Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious, and I love it. But there, it's seriously, like, I, I, my, my side in this whole debacle, as a, as a tall guy, right, I'm tall enough to be tall, is that no one should be reclining their seat. And that really... 
if you're one of these people that's that's on the other side of the argument, it's just like it's good versus evil. It's assholes versus non assholes. Everyone who's anti reclining is is for a peaceful society where we can all enjoy a piece of you know the American dream. Everyone who's like fuck that. What if it's got the option to recline? I'm reclining no matter what. It's like you're just an asshole. You're on the wrong side of history, and it will eventually show one day. Like one, there you will get your comeuppance for this. This is a karma building thing to me. If you're, a, I recline no matter what. The button is there. It's my option. I paid for the seat. Why shouldn't I? Fuck whoever's behind me. I don't get that. And plus, China, for two parts. One, they clearly don't know how to sue, because in America, if somebody breaks your laptop screen, it's not that you're suing for the value of the screen. Which in this case, it feels like they undershot. Four hundred seventy-eight dollars and fifteen cents was seventy percent of it. You you should you got to do you got to add in all the all the the pain and suffering the emotional distress the amount of work you missed out on it ends up being like fifty thousand dollars that's how much I sue for if you recline on my laptop having to go to the fucking Apple store do you have any idea how much pain and suffering is included there I mean that was partly to get it fixed your fault no I'm saying if you reclined on my laptop right now oh. and broke it I don't have a backup I'm gonna have to go to the Apple store. And get another and one. You're or gonna get, get this the, one fixed. And then you're gonna get the wrong product. You think you're upgrading, but you're really downgrading. I, yeah, I somehow end up with a MacBook Air from fucking 2012 or something like that's, that. That's what I have. That's my laptop. I think mine's 2014, so I'm not that far ahead of you. But uh, oh, by the way, my phone is arriving earlier than expected. Oh, It'll be here on good. Monday. Thank you, China, for lifting your COVID restrictions a little bit faster than anticipated. That helped me out. Wasn't supposed to get it till. Last day of December or early January at first. What phone are you getting? The 14 Pro Max. I decided that I want to live with Carpool Tunnel for the rest of my life. Okay. Because, the, like, for me, all right, it's the, I watch stuff on my phone a lot. Right? Like, the, the toddler, she gets preferential treatment in our household, so when she wants to watch a show, it's like, only recently have I started to get her to use the iPad a little more so I could get the World Cup on the big screen. But before that, I was just folding every single time, and I'd end up watching whatever I was trying to watch on my phone. So I need the biggest screen possible is the end of my argument. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. But uh, really, to be honest with you, and this used to be the opposite of the case, the only thing I give a shit about is having the nicest camera possible on my yeah. phone. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm you know, I take pictures of my dogs and, and the toddler, and when RJ is born in February, I want to make sure... That I'm getting the highest quality photos of my spawn possible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You might not be happy with me doing this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna dox RJ. How are you gonna dox him? I know what it stands for. What? Rick James, bitch. That's it. <laughs> now we're gonna have two camps: people who believe it's Ross Jared, and people who believe it's Rick James. Rick James Bolin. That's kind of a tight name. Rick, RJB. Rick hey, there's James, still bitch. time. I can change it to whatever I want. None of this is official yet. So if somebody comes up with something dope, I'll use it. Yeah, if you have a dope RJ acronym, let us know. Yeah, holler at us. We'll see if uh, it's good enough for me to use. Anyway, that's what's going on in China. We don't even have the thing in American airplanes, like on our airlines. It doesn't. There's no policy about asking the person behind you before you recline. So the knee guard thing came with a stack of uh, like cards. Did like, you buy one? No, no, no. I've, I read an article about it. Okay. It came with a stack of like business cards that on them said, hello, person sitting in front of me. I am a tall man or woman and I need to use the knee guard on your seat. I apologize for the inconvenience. So it's like you just a courtesy card. You reach it around their chair, hand them the courtesy card to let them know, hey, I are, I'm not asking. I'm telling you that I'm, do but I'm courtesy carding you. So, so I love that because it cuts out the need <laughs> yeah. for verbal communication. Yeah, yeah. You just hand them the card. And then they might assume you're mute and that they don't even have the chance to communicate back and forth with you. Like, I'm going to do it. First of all, it's the need defender mm -hmm. if you want to get the official one. And now I'm looking at photos of it. And this is such a dick move. <laughs> it's such an unbelievable fucked up move because it's literally you're taking away the right. Now, on this on this side of the argument, I don't know who's right or wrong because you're taking away the right of the person in front of you, the opportunity to decline, e to recline even a little bit. Cause you know, there's like, there's like an in-between. Yes. Not, you don't have to go all the way back. How does it work? It literally, it, it is literally a thing that attaches to your seat that stops their seat from being able to root, to move backwards in any way, shape or form. <laughs> oh, 
Here, this is like an updated version that I'm looking at, I think. So it's like these two clamps that you put down on your tray table that keeps their seat from being able to move. It feels illegal. Yeah. But I also like, all right, look, I'm 6'2". I'm not that tall. I feel for people who are like 6'4", 6'6", 6'8", getting on airplanes. If, okay. I don't know how you're doing it. I mean, here's the thing. If you are that tall, which I consider a privilege to be that tall. It's a blessing and a curse, yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Once you get past 6'2", it starts to get a little hairy. I think if you're that tall, you need to just pay for first class or exit row or whatever. You can't come... If you buy it... If you know that it's going to be tight, so don't buy it. Dude, like, but it there's... Sucks, like, but... Here's the thing. There's a, I always go for the aisle for this reason because I'm tall enough to where it is uncomfortable if I'm in the window seat or in the middle. Like, to a certain degree, it is uncomfortable. So I like to be able to move my legs around a little bit. I've got restless leg syndrome. i got to be able to wiggle around. And I like to put them in the aisle, and I realize that's dangerous. And yes, I've been hit by one of the carts before, and it sucks. But it's the risk I'm willing to take. But there's only so many aisle seats. And if you're doing, like, Southwest, where there's no assigned seating, it's a fucking battle. You get the exit row. Pay, pay for the A, you know, pay for the preferred boarding. You get to be tall. That, that's that's dope. Okay, our next topic relates to this, so I'm going to move on. But first, today's episode is also brought to you by Talkspace. When it comes to therapy and psychiatry, getting the help you need has never been so simple. When you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device, it means mental health can be on your schedule. And alleviating the wait times to get an appointment or the travel time to an office can free up time for the rest of your life. Talkspace is so convenient and accessible, helps me feel supported around the clock. They let you send messages to your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform, which allows you to update them on the challenges and triumphs you're facing in real time, so you don't have to wait for your next session. With Talkspace, you set goals with your therapist. They can hold you accountable, make sure you're really progressing. Therapy can help shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. I've been in therapy for a really long time now and cannot more highly recommend it, but I also understand getting started can be daunting. It's that first step that's typically the hardest for people. Getting started is way less daunting with Talkspace. They make connecting with a licensed therapist easy, so you can stop setting aside your own mental well-being. I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. You can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. Then you can text, video, or send voice messages to your licensed therapist, so it's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions from the comfort of your home. Don't even have to go anywhere for therapy in 2022. It's the beauty of technology, Jared, and as a listener of this podcast, you will get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure you use the code RBP to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the podcast. That's Talkspace.com, code RBP. So our de facto legal representation, my dear friend Brandon, he texted me a great question for the show that is also airplane related. He asked me, which is worse, people boarding planes or people deboarding planes? And I'll give you some of my points, Jared. Uh, First of all, boarding planes, you're dealing with the whole, like, depending on which airline you fly in, obviously, we're going to assume this is one of the ones with assigned seating and where you've got board, and even, I guess, on Southwest, no assigned seating, but you do have the boarding groups, right? And you don't want to be stuck in, like, group D 48 or whatever. I don't even like, know if there is a D. I'm pretty sure there is. It's what I end up in all the time. I feel like there's like, at this point for Southwest, there's like A through F, and that those all come after like three preferential groups that are before, like, so like military, pregnant women, preferred boarding that you pay extra for, and then A through F. I, I, we, I don't know if we're talking about the same. What are you talking about? F, I think, is like American or whatever. Southwest is A, where 1 to 15 is the preferred people. You pay extra to be 1 to 15 in A. And then then there's 16 to 30, and then there's 30 to 50 or whatever? 1 to 25, 25 to 50, and then there's B, 1 to 25, 25 to 50, and then there's C, 1 to 25, 25 to 50. Yeah, yeah, this shit's different on every airline. Yeah. Like, the numbering and the lettering is different on every airline. I I like Southwest the best for boarding because... You get in the line. You know where it's supposed to be. You know where to stand. You yeah, get... but that's the fucking problem. Nobody stands where they're supposed to. Nobody checks with the person in front of them or behind them. There's always some dickhead who's holding their fucking boarding pass down to their side. And I can see clearly they're cutting. That is cutting. It by is, definition. That's cutting. And cutters should be locked up. Uh, here's what I hate about boarding. And this is for non-Southwest ones because Southwest has like the lines. 
when they go, all right, group uh, C board, and I have to go, and if I'm group C, I need to push through a crowd of 50 people in group D standing in front of the area. Dude, you're group D. Just wait. Wait in the wings. Wait in the wings. Don't cover the entrance. You're blocking the people who are supposed to be walking through here. Remain in your fucking seat until your letter is up at least. What the hell is wrong with those people? Uh, good evening, passengers. We're going to start boarding flight 72F to Colorado Springs, Colorado. Everyone stands up and all moves over to the fucking area at the same time? No. Why? Who are these assholes? Who? I, I can't stand the people who just block the entrance way. It's like, dude, there's people behind you. Like, you're not cool. You're actually the opposite of cool. You're like group F. Dude, sometimes when it's not Southwest and there is assigned seating, I don't even go with my group boards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's, Fuck a, if it's assigned just, seating and I'll I don't... I'll just remain in my seat and wait till all the other yep. assholes are on the plane and then go up there. As long as you yes. make it before they close the gate or whatever, you don't have to deal with anybody if there. If you have an assigned seat and you have no carry-on bag, you should be waiting until the end. Until they literally make you get up and go onto the plane. Yep. Why the hell would you want to get on the fart box before you have to? Don't get it. I don't get Why it. Why would you stand before you have to? You're in the fucking way. The carry-on bag, is it ruins that, though. You carry-on bag, you have to get in early as possible, or else you need to walk to the back of the plane, especially if you have a connection you're trying to catch. Like Yeah, but the worst-case scenario nowadays with the carry-on bag is that they end up checking it for you, right? And I know that sucks. If you... Oh, I love doing that. I that's my, my favorite thing to do is not pay to check a bag. And then drop and it then, right there and drop it right there and go oh oh okay here you go you you said that the oh, overhead bins are full oh you can uh, check mine for free i saved 25 bucks yeah because i'm never going up into my bag once i'm on the plane bro. never you have your shit out that you need the airpods are in pocket i've got my book in my hand and my water in the other yep. what the fuck else is there you got an eye mask one of those freaky neck rolls put it on beforehand wear it like a necklace what's wrong do you do you do that no the, the neck roll i don't do that a lot of people doing that I, now yeah, there are probably I mean, good for your neck honestly yeah my neck is messed up. My neck's not great either. I, I can't sleep on airplanes, though. It's literally impossible. Without drugs, it can't be done. And even then, they better be strong drugs. I used to be able to do it, but now I can't put my head on the tray table anymore because they moved the some... seats three inches closer together. So now my head, my forehead hits the seat in front of me, and I can't get my head under there. I remember the last time I fell asleep on an airplane, and it was in high school. And it was before they did the extra three inches so they could fit another row or whatever the hell. And, uh... There's a there's an infamous photo of me, and even then in high school, I'm asleep. My face is on the fucking the the tray table, and my back looks like a a bridge that's folding back up or whatever. It's like it's a it's a an, a hard sharp angle because I don't fit, and now I, ca I can't it can't be done, and I can't yeah, sleep like yeah. this. No, I can't sleep backwards in the chair because you could fall either side. Now I I can, I can sleep. I have a window seat which I don't get anymore because. Uh. I don't. I I was window seats my entire life, up until like the last three years. Now I just I, the I, the ability to go to the bathroom and not have to push people out of the way and like wake people up, has it's invaluable. Now, has now made me be an aisle guy. But you could sleep up against the window with your head up against the wall. Yeah, I could do that. You get, See, that's, you get your jacket or a blanket head against the wall. That's easy. And I well, it's not easy for me, but I can I can kind of get into a half a sleep state if I've got that going on. But I'm also like a dolphin. That's how dolphins sleep. They shut off half of their brain. Yeah, because it's like I'm in and out kind of, you know, and I'm sitting there going ar, ar, like a dolphin. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm also the guy who I no matter what, if I can reach it, I'm closing the window. If you're in the middle seat, you're going to reach over. No, the no. I'm saying like if I'm in the window seat oh, yeah. and, and the, I have partial access to the window in front of me, I'm still closing that window, too. I'm putting yeah. my fingers through and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm accessing your personal space and I'm closing the fucking window because I don't like looking out the window. Okay, so we this whole segment was about boarding and deboarding. How about mid-flight when people take their shoes off and put their fucking feet within like a foot of you? Jail. Prison. That's... It's completely unacceptable. Or when they when they put their hair, their long hair, over the back oh, of, the, mama. of the back of their seat and it, it water falls Ooh. down right near your tray table where you're trying to enjoy a ginger ale. You do that to me, I'm cutting your fucking hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, getting yeah, a haircut. Yeah. And it's going to be disturbing. I'm going to make all kinds of zigging and zagging layered in the worst way possible. You're going to look like Charlie Brown's ghost costume for Halloween. <laughs> but I don't like the window. I, I the, the fact that I understand the reference is that you make sometimes blows my mind. But I don't like the window being open because I don't like being reminded that I'm 30,000 feet in the air. I don't like it. Really? Don't like it. I like it when we're over land. 
and I can see, because it's like there's shit to look at. But when it's like over the ocean or it's well, just clouds out there. I like there, over the ocean better because it's safer. You're more likely to survive a water landing than you are a, 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 an urban landing. I would rather die in a land crash than survive a water one and have to worry about doing the whole castaway thing well, or floating out there. Your, your seat cushion may act as a flotation device. That's all horse shit though, right? No. None of that's Why real. Why would they though. lie about that? I'm like, I, I just want to know, does anyone know a single person who's ever been part of a plane crash that survived as a result of the stupid fucking shit that happens in a plane, the oxygen mask falling? Isn't that just to calm you? So you'll remain calm? That's yeah, what I heard. it's nitrous. It puts you asleep. So, no, but so like... You die but, asleep. But straight oxygen flow to the brain, like it keeps you from panicking or something like that. Well, I, I thought swear. they do it because the cabin depressurizes, so you need oxygen. That's what you. they want you to think, okay. Jared. You got, you got plane conspiracies. Yeah. And they're not like the 9-11 ones. No. <laughs> they're even stupider. They're, they're, they are even stupider. <laughs> I don't know. The 9-11 ones are pretty fucking bad in some cases. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's not my favorite being up there in the air. I don't... I don't have, like, panic attacks on airplanes, necessarily. I don't need, like, a Xanax or whatever. I just am not comfortable. Like, I'm like, can we just get this fucking over with? I can't wait till, like, almost instant air yeah. travel is a thing. One, uh... It has to be coming one day, right? One podcaster I, li- I listen to, Nick Terraney, he has a fear of flying that he, like, goes to a, you know, psych- psychologist for. Yeah. And his fear is of a mid-air collision. That's his... It's, it's not, like, crashing into the ground. It's fear that a, another plane... Will crash Dude, into it. Here's the thing that sucks the most about human psychology. All of these paranoias or phobias that we develop, they're all so irrational. But rationality has nothing to do with it. Like when you say that out loud, I'm like, that's the stupidest fucking thing but, I've ever but heard. But then you look at the the Dallas air show that happened two weeks ago where there was a mid air collision. Yeah, but that's an air show where they're doing dumb shit they shouldn't be doing. But imagine anyway. if that's your fear, you're, that's going to make it so much worse if there's a national news story about a mid air collision. I'm going to group text with a guy who every time there's a fucking plane crash, he sends it to us. He's like our airplane crash correspondent in the group text. He sent us the Dallas air show one, and he sent us another one this morning that was like, where's my phone? It's like some kind of a, another, air, like no one died in this one, which is like he, he made sure to say that, like mm-hmm. it made it better. Mm-hmm. But still, it blows my mind that there are as many of these as there are. And this guy's the same person updating us every single time. Jesus Christ, this text group is way, way too active. An F-35B crashed at JRB Fort Worth Airport during a failed vertical landing. It's one of those. Hey, why did he send you that? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I just responded, you're officially our plane crash correspondent. And that got several hearts from the group text. It's always a good feeling. You but know? Now you validated him, though. He thinks those are his hearts. Yeah. And he to keep doing it. But I got validation, too. So that's really all that matters to me. You know? I feel appreciated and heard and seen. Which doesn't happen all that often. Uh, okay, back to the argument. So boarding the plane, you've got the boarding groups, you've got the lines, you've got people cutting, you've got... People not getting in the correct order, all the assholes who are standing up way too early, they know it's way too early, they don't care for some reason, they're in the way. Deboarding, the obvious one that we've been talking about for five years now, people who stand up the second the ding happens, as if they're going to have somewhere to go, you've landed, you, you're not in a position to deboard yet, but they, they, it's, and they are, it's usually the argument is they want to stretch their legs. But it doesn't make sense. You're making everyone on the plane claustrophobic. It's like uh, every day before we do a podcast, Jared has to come and adjust the camera right next to me and his ass is just in my face for about 30 seconds. It's that, but for like 10 minutes. And it's a stranger, not somebody who I can plant my nose firmly between their butt cheeks and take a huge whiff, which is like the whole point if you're going to have somebody's ass in your face, right? So I just don't get those people... Adult, you're always getting whacked with somebody's pulling out their shit from the fucking overhead bin and like whacking whacking you in the head with it Wearing a backpack and turning to talk to their friend and smoking you with the back of their backpack It sucks people get way too close to each other Those people are the worst um, But I think that's the I'm a, I want to argue Somehow that the boarding is worse because there's more there's different kinds of shittiness and, and stupidity and, and cutters and there's more th- things you can do incorrectly. Deboarding, it's mostly that you can stand up too quickly. I can't really think of anything else that people do deboarding. Uh, well, there's people who are getting their bags down and they whack you in the head with them. I already said that. Did you just space out for 45 seconds? The ca- You know there's cameras on. Holy shit. You did. Wow. 
he completely disassociated yeah, that from happens reality. Every, every so often, I missed an entire bit. No, I, I got I got the the standing up thing with planting your nose in my butt cheeks, but you know how you'll be in a conversation with somebody and they'll space out and miss something you said, and you're like, you didn't hear me just now. Imagine if it was your job. What's wrong with this guy? Sorry. So which one are you? Which one's worse, boarding or deboarding? I just made my case, which you'll never know unless you go back and watch the episode. Now you make yours. Hopefully it'll be the exact same as mine, so we can prove my point even further. No, my, I, I think there are way more ways you can be a shitty boarder than ways you can be a shitty deboarder. Good, it was to, the same. To your point. Good, good. Thank you, Brandon, for the uh, conversation recommendation. Today's episode is also brought to you by Felix Gray Glasses. Felix Gray set out to create eyewear that would improve daily screen time, and since then, the company's... Uh, been on a mission to create a better relationship with technology. Felix Gray lenses filter 15 times more blue light that can make screen time tough on eyes and disruptive to sleep. I've been working on the internet for over a decade now, coming up on year 12 in January. Good God. And when I'm done with work, I, end, I love gaming. I love watching my favorite shows and movies to unwind, all of which involve screens, just like my job does. My eyes get worn the hell out. So when I got introduced to Felix Gray, everything changed. I have several pairs of their glasses and a pair of their sunglasses as well, which you can see up above J-Bone's head in the background, I think, maybe. And uh, I love them all. I wear them all. Every time I'm rocking them, someone asks me where I got them. Felix Gray glasses, the quality of designer frames, by the way, it's not some cheap blue light coating painted over them that's going to chip off. That has literally never happened to me, and I've been wearing them for years. These are not gas station or grocery store blue light glasses that your cheap aunt gave you for Christmas. They're the real deal. They're stylish and functional as they protect your eyes from all the blue light that the screens we rely upon emit. Hard to cut back on screen time. It is a challenge especially if you're like me. But you can do your eyes a solid and get yourself some Felix Grays to get relief from those headaches, dry eyes, blurry vision, and what have you that occurs over the course of your workday. A few frames for you to check out. The Faraday, the Nash, and the West. And now Felix Gray offers contact lenses as well, sunglasses like I mentioned earlier, everything that your eyes need. Just go to felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP to support the show and get free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges. Non-prescription and prescription are available. Check them out. felixgrayglasses.com slash RBP. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash RBP for free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges. It may have been on Patreon, but Jared and I recently discussed two different stories where people lost their jobs because of police body cams. One was a cop having sex on the clock and his body cam accidentally recorded the incident. And one was a Tampa police chief resigning due to a shady situation that unfolded between her and a cop on his body cam. And we were questioning how exactly this body cam situation works with cops. Well, we received an email from a listener sharing uh, another story that is hilarious to me and providing some clarity Perhaps on the body cam stuff, it says, Hey, Ross and J-Bone, in response to the last pod and the confusion on why the officer's body cam footage got leaked or got out there, I know that at least in Florida, and I believe most states, if not all, all body cam footage is saved from the time the officer turns on his body cam and is made public record. No body cam footage can be or is erased. I know this because a law enforcement friend of mine's coworker accidentally turned on his body cam when setting it on the charger that was placed on his bedroom dresser where it recorded him and his wife doing the dirty, and that is now all public record. Love the pod, gang gang. People still say that to me, by the way, all the time, constantly. The gang 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 thing, it fucking blows my mind. It was like five, I don't think I've said it in three years. People keep saying it, though. Um, no problem with it, it's just interesting. Okay, so... Does that mean I can, like, pull this up on, on the internet and watch Don't this? act like you already haven't. I didn't, well, I, I haven't yet. I was planning on it later. You know, when I wasn't in the office, when it's more appropriate. But, th seriously, is, like, can I... I here, here's can what, we access it? I'm is it like the Library assume, of Congress? I'm going to assume that they somehow got that scrub, but that it's on, like, Live Leak or whatever. Oh, yeah. Everything makes it to Live Leak. Mm -hmm. That's where they've got all the inappropriate shit that you shouldn't really be watching, but some yeah, like sick part of you deep down. Escalator, malfunction. Cutting off somebody's head. Yeah. yeah. Or not escalator. Elevator would cut escalator, the head off. Escalators. Escalators. You know, escalators. Those are the bad ones. Yeah, but they take like your foot, 
right? No, you fall into them and you get you get grinded up in the gears. Oh my god! You can't see that part generally. My wife has a fear of escalators. Yeah, I don't know I mean, if I'm supposed to be sharing that, but she doesn't like them. She prefers when they're dead, and you and they're just like stairs. <laughs> Which is always that, funny to me. That Mitch Hedberg joke, it's like it is like one of the best yeah. Mitch Hedberg jokes. That escalators aren't out of order; they're just stairs. Yeah, that was it. I think he was, as I, we've said this many times, many people have. This joke is common, but he was like a one man Twitter. Like he would have yeah, had yeah, yeah. a billion Twitter followers because all of his jokes are these one liners that could have been easily distributed and under. Well, I guess it's Elon's changing it to like no? ten thousand characters. Yeah, I don't or something. believe that. I don't. I don't. How would they even show up? It'd read more? No, I don't believe that. I don't want to believe a lot of the things he's done, though. He's like slowly derailing, and as he, it's like there's something about him now, Elon Musk, that you can tell he has this, uh, this like need to be liked, which is what makes this purchase of Twitter so ironic, because he was pretty widely liked before all of this. Yeah, there weren't that many people who had a bad word to say about Elon Musk until he got into the Twitter argument. And said he was going to buy it, then tried to get out of it. Like, everything has just gotten worse for him day by day since that, since since this whole Twitter yeah, that, purchase. That Dave Chappelle thing didn't go very well for him. No, I have a buddy who was at that show, too. Did he boo him? No. He's a fan. Not like a fanboy, not one of those psycho Elon fans, but he's a fan. And it upsets me, to a degree. But... I also have a friend who's selling his Tesla because he hates Elon so much. Same group text, these two guys, by the way. And also, Is one of them the plane correspondent? Nope. That's a totally different guy in the same group text. It is the most interesting group text that I'm a part Add of. Add me in, player. I don't think it'll... We've known each other for like 20 years, everybody in this group text. You don't qualify. Whatever. And you know how that goes. Like, once you get one guy into the group text who's really not supposed oh, to the be group there... Text dies. Yeah, yeah. Just kills the whole thing. Or it becomes one person so with awkward. an Android, and it just completely derails the entire group text. I had that happen, too. Between one guy with green texts and a QAnon member, it destroyed my college group text. I'm no longer a part of it. Or the Fantasy Football League. Both of those reasons applied to Would both of those things dying. Would you ever rejoin the Fantasy Football League? Um... Because QAnon's kind of on the way out, right? I no, it would be worse now. It would be even worse. It would just uh, I, I I didn't even paint my fingernails at that point, bro. Oh, yeah. It would be a fucking nightmare going to that. That was where <laughs> one of the one of the like moments that I will remember. It's seared in my brain. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. This dude I went to college with who isn't even in the fantasy league, by the way. This was one of the problems with this fantasy league. We would have our draft weekend, and a bunch of random people would also be invited that were not in the fucking league, which doesn't make any sense. It was just dudes who wanted to get away from their wives and kids for a weekend, and they would come join us, and I think lie to their wives and kids and say they were in the fantasy league. But it's neither here nor there. The point is this dude was not in the league. He was there. We were swimming in the pool, and uh, this is back in, like, 2020, I think, right? Or maybe maybe it was no it was definitely 2020 because it was not last year I've been out for a couple years now um, but he he turned to me and he said uh, hey Ross just how woke are you and this was before woke like exploded as a word like he was one of the origin origins of like that even how having a negative connotation that? how do you answer that I said uh, really I, really no I think I said well I'm definitely not asleep and he just like stared at me like. I, like, seriously, I want a serious answer. And I was like, I really don't know how to fucking answer that. Like, what, how do you quantify your, I won't even say the word again. It just sucks. That word needs to be canceled. I'm pro-cancel culture wow. for the cancellation of that word. Wow, dude, you can't, you're, you are woke. <laughs> and I've been spending a lot, that's the thing, I've been spending a lot of time trying to become less woke, more sleep, so that I'm, so that I'm more relatable, you know, to that guy in yeah. the pool. I want him to be able to listen to yeah. the pod. I don't want to upset him with my awakeness. But yeah, that fantasy league is... I'll never be a part of it again, sadly. The two leagues I'm in, one of which is the RBP Discord League. Guess who's in first place heading into the playoffs? It's not you. This guy. Really? Yep. You were not in first place all season. I've, well, I think I won like six in a row and outscored every other person in the league during those six weeks and somehow ended up above the, the one of the members who was crushing the entire yeah, she season. Was, she was winning the entire season. She absolutely dominated Lady Midrain, I think her name is. Uh, now I'm above her even because of points scored, but we have the same record. I think I lost like two games. Crushed it. 
absolutely crushed it. Made the playoffs in my other league too. Oh, I'm in, I, I have a bye week in my one league, and I'm in the playoffs. Uh, had a good start in my big money league, hundred fifty dollar buy in, trying to win a trying to win a G. I had a terrible start in mine. I think it's one hundred fifty dollars as well. Not the same one, obviously. This is like uh, guys from my high school, but they they were the grade above me. That's what's weird about it. Like I don't really like understand how I somebody dropped yeah. out probably because of QAnon and I got dragged in and uh, I started off horribly I was also told maybe intentionally the wrong draft time so I showed up two hours or not two hours but like 45 minutes late I missed several rounds <laughs> you missed the important rounds and I've still made the playoffs Wow, which again points to the stupidity of fantasy football because there's years where I put in so much work so much time and energy and effort working the waiver wire, making sure I had all kinds of printouts before the fucking draft, and then I got smoked every week, didn't make the playoffs, and pissed away $150. And this year, I missed the six opening rounds. Show up, I'm mostly screaming at people in the chat, like, how the fuck did you guys not tell me the right time? This is so fucked up. And then I make the playoffs? It's just it's silliness. Mm -hmm. It's all silliness. Today's episode is also brought to you by my bookie. Speaking of sports, our online sports book and casino sponsor here at the Ross Bolin Podcast. If you're looking for a place to get all the action you can handle this college football bowl season or to bet on the World Cup final, NBA, NFL, golf, MMA, boxing, or whatever, all your sports betting needs are taken care of at mybookie.ag. They've got all the prop bets, live lines, alternate lines, and futures that you could possibly need, plus the online casino with live roulette, live blackjack, and more, which is super fun. Uh, you, pl you play blackjack and you can see the dealer, and then you can, uh, you can talk shit in the chat. Uh, when things don't go your way, makes it all the more enjoyable. And for a limited time only, join the MyBookie family using the code ROSS at checkout to support the show, and you'll receive a deposit bonus instantly, giving you even more dough to throw at your favorite sporting event. The website is awesome on desktop and mobile. It's incredibly easy to use. Beautifully laid out, so what are you waiting for if you're already betting on sports elsewhere and are down to do so on a great platform that also supports your favorite podcast? Code Ross at mybookie.ag is the way to do it, folks. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie. So last week on Patreon, Jared and I had the pleasure of sitting down with one of our fo former co-workers, Daniel Barus, who has gone on to create his own company, Barus Works, where he creates custom furniture and art and random stuff like knives and bowls almost entirely from used skateboards. His story is incredible, and the interview that Jared and I did was too cool not to share with all of you in some capacity, so I've decided to share some of it with you today in hopes that you'll not only support Daniel and Barus Works, as he is an awesome dude and it is an awesome company, but also support RBP by joining our Patreon for more cool interviews like this and ad-free hotline call-driven episodes like the hotline call extravaganza that Jared and I recorded this week. Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Ross Bolin podcast is where you can listen to or watch the full interview with Mr. Daniel Barus. But for now, here is part of the one-hour interview we dropped with him last week. Enjoy. Um, let me see, where do we even start with you? You are now making a living creating incredible custom furniture and bowls and all kinds of amazing stuff using skateboards. Correct. Skateboards. Yeah. It's called Barus Works, your That's company. Right. And you've got 103,000 followers on Instagram, which is about five times the amount we have for this <laughs> podcast. 70,000 followers on TikTok. You're catching up with us. We've got 100K. Damn. Um, one of your TikToks I noticed has 39.5 million views, which is one of the largest view counts I've ever seen on TikTok on the app, period. Uh, granted, I don't spend too much time on there. I get in and out. But let's, let me start with this question. How did Bruce Works come to be? So, um, whenever I was working with you guys at yeah. Grand X, I convinced them to let me live in a van. Right, you remember that? Like, I your van was sick. It was super sick. I was dope. I I sold it and bought my house. Um, what kind of van was it? <laughs> it was a Mercedes Sprinter, the one forty four. But you put a ton of work into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I made it like a full custom livable... build out. You on you were on the front page of Reddit at one point building. I that, was. Yeah, it was sick. It was cool. But I built this van. Um, and I worked remote before working remote was a thing. You know, I convinced Grand X to let me do that because they wanted me to take on the whole western half of the U.S. And I was like, man, I just came from traveling 80% of the time for five years. I was kind of looking to travel less. That's why I took this job. 
And they offered that to me and kind of wanted me to do it. And I was just thinking about how I would want to do it. Like if, you know, and how would you make it interesting and like work how for would you? I be psyched right. to do it? And it's like, cause I was kind of burnt out on flying across the country every week. I'd done that for so long. That was like, man, I'm kind of, you know, it was fun, but after five years of that working at Volcom, I was just kind of like, nah, I'm, you know, I want to spend more time. I was living in Austin and I love the city. Yeah. So I was like, I want to spend more time. So I kind of came up with this idea and went to Grand X and they said, okay. And then fast forward, I had to, you know, buy the band and buy the van and build it out. And in the process of building it out, I fell in love with woodworking. And then whenever Grand X sold, I was, you know, that was whatever, July or August of 2018, I was living in the van and everybody got let go pretty much. Like most people got let go and Grand X sold. I was one of them. And I was kind of like, what do I, what do I want to do here? And I had some job offers on the table. I had like really well-paying job offers on the table for some like really reputable companies in the skate world. I had some good interviews, but nothing was, nothing was lighting my soul on fire. Like nothing was making me like, I didn't, I don't know. I just didn't feel fulfilled. The passion wasn't there. Yeah, not really. Like I had my dream job, but after doing my dream job for seven years, I realized that that wasn't my dream job. You know, I matured enough and gone through life and I was like, this isn't what I want to do. So I, was like, what do I want to do with my life? And I ended up taking a long bike ride. I biked from Denver to Austin in 12 days by myself. <laughs> and I used that bike ride to decide what I wanted to do with my life. And I started with the the one thing I was like, I don't want to be bound by time. Like I want to lose track of time. And skateboarding has always done that for me. But at the time I was like, I don't, I can't be a pro skateboarder. I'm not good enough. You know, you're pretty good though. I will <laughs> I say. I am good, but like not there's a whole different level. Like I'm minor, like minor would, league baseball yeah. versus major league baseball. It's kind of like like that. You would have won the skate competition in Real Bros of Simi Valley, though. I, is that a thing? Yeah, there was one. I probably would have won that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just didn't see an avenue to like make a living at that. And then cycling, you know, biking, I lose track of time. But I didn't at the time. I didn't see how that could be a career path. And then I thought back to building my van, and it was just so difficult that. Every day I'd lose track of time. I'd forget to look at my phone and I'd literally just get lost in the moment. So I started there and then I just kind of thought about what I could do with that. And then I hit up my friend who was doing things out of skateboards, but on a small level in Denver. And I kind of, I was like, Hey man, what if we combined our knowledge? Like I know how to do big projects. I know you know how to do stuff out of skateboards. What if we combined our, our knowledge and, and kind of see what can happen? And he was at a point where I think he was just like needing a little extra oomph so that he was like, yeah, let's do it. And I finished the bike ride, flew back to Denver and we started and we made our first table out of skateboards in two, like like two weeks later and we sold it in 30 minutes for a couple grand. <laughs> and then it was just like off to the races. And you sold it in 30 minutes? Yeah, we sold it in 30 minutes for two grand. It was crazy. Holy we put it on shit. social media and just like, boom, gone. And then we were just booked, man. But I was going through like his clients and his people and using his shop. And then I kind of got to the the space where I am I was like ready. To, I was kind of wanting to go back to Louisiana. And I'd met this girl that at the time I thought was it. And that was kind of the catalyst for it. But I, I approached my friend. I was like, hey, dude, I kind of feeling this. Like I want to go home. Um, you know, I just want to see though. I'm either like at that point or stay here and sell my van and like invest in the shop and let's just go in. And he was like, dude, honestly, if I was you, I would go home. So I was like, all right. So I like let him do his thing. And I went home and started my own thing. And then four years later, here we are. And I'm I'm doing this. <laughs> so when you went home, you I went and, home and you and him separated. We separated because you know he still. It was no like he's no I'm, hard feelings. Yeah, no, it was like he's my still one of my best friends. Um, but that is just the place. That's that just it like started, yeah. It was, was like you know him. we can't work together if I'm literally across the country. Right, right. So I started over and you know wasn't selling tables in thirty minutes for two grand. Like I started making pins and bottle openers and bowls and. Well, you actually made something else that I have with me here. Uh, I commissioned this from you. Oh, dude, I forgot about this. In 2019. This. Dang, this, this is, is one of the first things I ever made. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, well, kind of. I mean, it was... We were joking before you arrived. Like, is he going to hate this because he, he no, thinks dude. it's shitty compared to what he makes now? Low-key, the quality now is better, but this is still sick. 
high key, right. the quality now is insane and amazing. If you want, <laughs> if you want to look at his stuff while we're talking, you can pull up on Instagram yeah. at Bruce Works. It's B A R O U S S E W O R K S. So you can't see this if you're listening, but so what this is is I hit up Daniel in like 2019 and said, "Hey, can you make me and Primrose, another one of our coworkers, a disc golf mini marker?" Which is essentially just like a really small circle that you use to put... Let you know where your disc landed. Exactly. It, you, you pick your disc up before you do your next throw, and that's where you throw it from. And so, uh, Daniel even engraved our, our last names on them. And, yeah, I, I'll post... This will be the picture, the featured image for this for this episode. Well, we can use one of his badass things that he wants us to use, okay, too. Okay, this will be included in you the gallery. You don't get the picture. <laughs> included um, in the gallery. Sorry. So, I watched, you know, early on, I'd, I'd followed you on Instagram, I think, and you started posting stuff about... The company and what you were making and I was just kind of like well Jesus Christ this it looks amazing like really really talented hardcore craftsmanship Thank right you. and you were putting up videos of the way some of it was you know you making like the 39.5 million view TikTok or whatever is you like cutting a skateboard in that, half and that then was almost me chopping doing your like one of the, off. yeah that was me doing something <laughs> that I hope to never do again and it's so funny because so many people thought it was staged or like on purpose. I saw and that in the comments. So many people are like, oh, this is totally, and it wasn't. It was literally just a stupid moment in my life that I hope to never repeat. But thankfully for like, thankfully for the technology, I didn't, ha I don't have to lose my finger and pay for it for the rest of my life. I just get to say, yeah, there's a video of me doing something dumb as hell. Right. And it it's went got very a, viral. It went, so it's got like it had just on my page like almost 40 million views and then it got shared a bunch more i would say across cuz it blew it super blew up on facebook i would say across all platforms it has close to 100 million views oh my god which is mind boggling that's like a third of the country yeah a third of the us <laughs> so what does the super bowl get <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like for those Something who like haven't that. seen it it's you can you explain it so it's me i am i'm cutting a, a piece of skateboards and I just in the moment my depth perception was completely off, and I go to reach for the to move the 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 piece that I just cut, and I fully just touch the blade, like fully just touch the blade in the dumbest way, and thankfully because of SawStop's amazing technology, I didn't lose my finger, and I can just laugh at this and hold up my good finger instead of a nub. Right, you know what I'm saying? Because, dude, I could have. That was a dumb. It was straight up stupid. But you know you got to make those mistakes. And thankfully, I'm not paying for it. Hey, you live, you live and you learn. <laughs> Did SawStop hit you up? Surely they hit you up. I actually hit them up. I was like, hey, dude, we could probably take advantage of this. And they are, they, in the, I'm going to work with them in the future, 100%. They gave me some parameters. They're like, hey, we, we like to see this, this, and this. And then, but um, yeah, in the future, I fully plan on working with them. Like they will be somebody that I, yeah, they'll be in my shop for sure. So the woodworking was inspired by you putting together this van so you could live life on the road and sell T-shirts at that point, I think it was. Uh, you were mostly doing rowdy gentleman sales, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny how life works out that way, where it ends up translating into this thing for you that... And again, it's, it's one of the, the reason I love your story so much, it's one of those things like you were chasing the ability to lose track of time and chasing the, the what I think is most people's dream on some level, finding something that you're actually passionate about and enjoy doing to, to turn into work, right? To For turn sure. into a, a, a level of income that can support your life and your lifestyle. And that doesn't work out for very many people. It's, it's one of the things that I feel super lucky. It'll that, work like, out for anybody who doesn't stop. That I doesn't quit. That does not, it just maintains persistence. Like, I say this all the time, especially with the way social media is like, all right, if you want to be, if, if the realest you like inside your head, you're the guy who's just taking bong rips and shooting the fucking ping pong ball into the red cups all day. If that's who you want to be for real, like the rawest version of you and you start on social media in three to five years, if you maintain that and you're down to eat dirt for three to five years, I promise you, you will pop off and you will start being able to monetize that. If whatever it is, if it's you want to make shit out of old skateboards, if you want to talk to people on the air, whatever it is, you just have to maintain a persistence and hold steadfast to the vision in your head of the person you're trying to become. And if you don't, I just believe that in my heart with everything, whatever it is that you want to do, like you can do anything, especially with social, like social media. It's such a huge, it's tool. a great tool. It's not, I don't even use social media to be social. 
Right. <laughs> Neither do I anymore. I use social media straight up as like a tool. I say this all the time, but there was certainly a point where in my life I thought social media's purpose was to to like make me look cool. And this is when I cared a lot about what other people thought about me. And that was how I used it. You know, I would like put up certain shit based on what I thought the perception of that shit would be to others. And now it's simply a marketing platform. Like it's a way that I make sure that my job gets done and my business grows and that I maintain my livelihood. It isn't about being social at all. Now, there is a a slight, you know, different angle here. It also exposes me to really cool shit sometimes. Your company being a really great example, right? Like there it's it's so difficult to market yourself in this world if you're not good at using social media, which is obviously the other side of your business that uh or the, the big thing that has given you a foothold, I think, is that you've crushed Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And you, you also hit on something that I think is really important. You're saying that, you know, as long as you don't quit, you can find your foothold no matter what. But you do have to be willing to eat a lot of dirt. For sure. Yeah, like I figured out a way, like I would say this all the time because for the first three years it was often I'd wake up with less than 20 bucks, like all the time. And I'd say this, I'm like, yo, I can wake up with seriously negative money and go live a life today that millionaires are jealous of. And there's right freedom now. <laughs> in that. There's oh, 100%. There's wealth in that. There's like, yo, you like, I got to go to work. But like, once I get there, I, I forget it's work. The, the leading up to get to the work, I'm like, oh, I got to do all this stuff. But like, once I'm in my shop creating, it's it's over. Like, I'm, I don't even look at my, my, my phone. I don't even respond to people. I'm just in my zone. Dude, that's the dream. For, it is the dream. For creative people if especially. I ask people... Anytime I meet with people, I'm like, yo, what would you do with a billion dollars in your account? And I could say this with full honesty, my life would not change. Not much. Because you're doing exactly I'm doing what, what I would do. If I was worth a billion dollars, I'd be doing the same shit. Like my day to day would look pretty much the same. What's the most expensive piece of furniture you've you've sold so far? Um, and I don't ask you that to make you brag. I'm just curious because it ain't, it's not cheap custom furniture on the whole period. Like anybody who's ever gone shopping for a fucking couch, and I'm talking about a boring couch that is not made of recycled skateboards from, you know, name of furniture. Haverty's. Haverty's. Don't know what that is. You may have just made it up. Never heard of that. Um, it's in Wisconsin only. I don't it's know. crazy expensive, though. You go get a couch, it's like $4,000 for a fucking couch. It's nuts. So yeah. I'm just curious, because you're making custom, amazing-looking stuff. Like, what's the most expensive thing you've sold off the top of your head? 20K. 20K. Yeah, for Dang. a table. Holy and I'm sure that For a was table? Dining table. A $20,000 table. That surely was also the most work you probably put in on something. I'm going to be honest... It wasn't. But there was learning experiences in this, right? I would like looking back, I was like, ah, this thing that I charged seven grand for really should have been like twenty. Right. But there's you know, hey, I you live and you learn, you know, and and I'm thankful for those learning experiences because I don't know, in the beginning I was just and I still kinda look this way, but in the beginning I was just like every project that I get, it's just I looked at it like how many more months can I do what I'm doing? Like, all right, cool. I get to do it for another month. I got based bills on paid. what you charged, just, like, right. uh, just on money coming in. That's sure. how I looked at it. Sure. I wasn't looking at like, what can I? I was like, how long can I keep doing this? Like, how long can I not, like, like I'm working. Like, I work way more than I ever did as a, a in sales or you know, in, like way more. But I, at the same time, like, I don't want to turn off. I told, I was telling my parents this the other day. I was like, yo, when I have kids, like, I could see this being an issue because. I don't oh, yeah. know how to, well, in, in a sense, because I, it'll prob, I'll probably mature and get beyond that, but I just love it so much that, like, I'm up every day, seven days a week at 5.30, and I'm working by six. Like, I'm doing something productive for my business by six. How old are you day. right now? 33. 33. Yeah. Yeah, you're a couple years younger than me. Uh, I'm about to have my first in February. My wife Dude, is due. congrats. Thank you. That's huge. But it's it, to your point, like, we, well, I have a little stepdaughter she's about to turn four and it is a great like we almost have like a Jekyll and Hyde life right now like when my stepdaughter is with us when she's not with her dad my shit looks completely different every day than it does when she's off with her dad and I don't have to worry about there being a kid there that uh that I need to be giving my time and energy to right and it's it is a weird balance that you have to strike at some point and I don't even, like, when I was 33, earlier 30s, I wasn't ready for that at all. Um, whereas now, every day, I feel a little bit more ready. So it's like one of those things that I think 
you know, obviously dependent on if you even make the decision to have kids long term. It kind of comes to you when it comes to you, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I definitely want kids. It's not something I'm rushing. Like I don't even have like a. <laughs> like you gotta have the other thing. You gotta have like a lady, yeah. right? You gotta, you gotta have, have a like, partner. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have a partner to have a kid. Like it's I have a cat. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I think when it when that comes time, I'll you know mold into what I need to be. I think I'll just have to get more regimented with my schedule. Um, that is something I think about because I just don't want to turn it off. I like I love it. <laughs> all right, that's all you get for free. But to support the Ross Bolin podcast and Jared and I's small business, Bolin Media, in exchange for the full interview and a shitload more RBP episodes and content. So many more. An unbelievable amount more. You can have RBP to listen to for months. Hit patreon.com slash Ross Bolin podcast today and subscribe for a minimum of $5 monthly and you'll immediately gain access to our entire backlog of ad-free episodes. And yeah, if you've never been on there, Jared's not wrong. There's a lot. Lots and lots and lots that you can listen to. Um... Over the coming weeks, months, whatever. Get completely caught up. If you thought you were caught up, as Jared always says, if you've never been on Patreon, you actually are not. There are so many more episodes of RBP. The premium ad-free stuff there on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast exclusively for those who are supporting us by subscribing. So go today, Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Check out all the episodes, including uh, last week's with Daniel Barus, our guest discussing Barus Works, his amazing company where he makes... Custom furniture and art and knives and such out of the knife, actual knife blade is not made out of a used skateboard, but that wouldn't be very sharp. No, but the handle, obviously, yeah. Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast. Also, go to bolinmedia.com slash shop and grab yourself some merch for the holiday season. We've got uh, the, the official J Bone long sleeve t shirt, the Bone Zone long sleeve t shirt, I, I should say. Uh, we've got uh, Stack Good Days crew neck sweatshirts and mouse pads and coffee cups and and Formula Bone merch as well and OCC merch if you're an Oysters, Clams, and Cockles listener and all the RBP stuff right there, Patre- or, uh, bowlandmedia.com slash shop, excuse me. But speaking of Patreon, when you join, there is a 10% off code that you get to use on bowlandmedia.com slash shop as an extra added thank you for supporting our podcast. Follow us on social media. We are on TikTok at the Ross Bolin Podcast, on Instagram at the Ross Bolin Podcast, on Twitter at Ross Bolin Pod. You can follow Jared at Jared Borislow on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow me at WR Bolin on Twitter and Instagram. We appreciate y'all. Holiday season in full swing. Hanukkah starts in two days. Christmas in nine days. Jared and I will be back next week with a couple more episodes before the break. Until then... Peace be with you, and also with you.